We are live. Welcome to Moon Knight Episode 3 Thoughts. This episode is called The Friendly Type. Brief off topic, Julian Noki just put out a new video, Why You Should Double Text. Excellent, like usual from her. I may have said this before, but it bears repeating, I will never not love Mirror Julie. Especially the Fast and Furious one. Love the meta element of this most recent one. R.I.P. Gaspar Uliel. And Layla talks about sort of being Robin Hood for antiques. And, you know, I saw someone say it was almost like she's Killmonger in that, you know, Killmonger's introduction where he talks about how, you know, what was it? You think your ancestors paid a fair price, something like that, you know. And Harrow already found the tomb. They're really hitting the, the gas on this one. Mark Spector brought his wit to a knife fight. It is very cool to see him fighting without it cutting away or him relying on powers. And Steven manages to take over, tries to get Mark away without hurting anyone. Really incredible seeing Egyptian streets and stores in something otherwise, you know, the MCU is very Western based and yeah, really cool. And, you know, Mark doesn't you know, he tries not to hurt the, the kid, so he grabs him, drags him over to the edge. Where's Harrow? I promise I'll kill you last. And the kid would rather sacrifice himself, and Kanchu isn't even upset, he's just surprised. Huh, I thought he'd talk. You know, you, you kind of get the idea that maybe Kanchu isn't the, the greatest, most ethical being. And Kanchu sends a signal to the gods blotting out the sun. And we see all the avatars meet, the camera movie, the animated show, the charmed faction. And it, it is quite clever that, like, you know, the, the other gods don't respect him. So how does he get a meeting? He does something that they're like, are you kidding me? Did you seriously just do that? You know, that's that's a way to, if, if you can't get positive attention, at least get negative attention. And Kaju accuses Arthur Harrow. That is a pretty good way to approach the problem. And, you know, some, some people have said that they're frustratingly ineffectual. Yeah, I, I have to agree. It, it's kind of, you know, the moment that you have, like, leadership in, in American fiction is either, like, they're, they're, like, badass, ineffectual, or evil. And, you know, they, they need to... They need the story to go on for a, three more episodes, so, you know, and, and they don't want to quite make them evil, so they're ineffectual. And the line of sinners would be longer than the Nile. Is this really the time and place to workshop your stand-up act? And Arthur manages to convince the gods to leave him alone. I really appreciate the scene explains why Kanshu is doing it alone instead of using the other gods. You know, th this is the kind of, this is how it goes when he tries working with the other gods, you know, so this is why he works alone. In in addition to this thing of, you know, they, they don't, you know, they, they don't agree with his methods. I, I know it's fairly simple and straightforward. I gotta admit, I kind of liked the, the like, when they're t when the avatar is taken over by the the god, like the you know stick their neck up and and the the eye thing and and like the way they talk you know in in general just like Oscar Isaac is just giving such nicely varied performances you can always tell who he is like if you showed a clip if you showed clips to people who have no idea about the show if you showed a clip of Stephen Mark and Mark speaking, you know, conscious speaking through Mark, people would be able to tell that's that's not quite the same character, is it? Because they're so different. And they're talking on the boat. I love when it cuts to another angle and we see that they're not alone on the boat. It doesn't matter. Yes, it matters. And Mark is reluctant to let Steve take control, so he'll read the coded message since he won't give control back. And then Arthur shows up at Anton's place. I really appreciate, like, he is, 
willing to do some things that you really wouldn't expect. Like, when was the last time the villain went to a place where the hero was just to, to try to, like, run interference like that? He Like, he doesn't start a fight. He doesn't send another jackal after him. He just, you know, uses the knowledge he has and his, you know, charisma to, yeah. And Mark goes all Moon Knight on them. He can attack with those moon-shaped things at a distance incredibly quickly. I quite like, you know, apparently, you know, Kanshu, the, the, what was it? He said the ceremonial armor suit is, you know, no longer accessible to Mark after this episode, at least for the time being. So I'm glad that we got a bit more action with the suit. And at the same time, it didn't take over. You know, I, I think it would have been a little boring if every single fight in this was the, the suit. And Steven takes over the body, tries to calm things down pretty quickly, lets Mark take it back because he's out of his depth. That really reminded me of the bit in Punisher Warzone. You know, it's, it's that thing of, like, everybody's against vigilantism until they need a vigilante. And Layla shoots one of the horse riders. She does also get knocked to the round herself, but that's that's a really good shot. Like, it is not easy to shoot a moving target like that. I don't speak from experience. <laughs> I have never shot anyone, period. I realized that it just sounded like, oh, I, I always immobilize my targets before I start shooting them. Which wouldn't make it better. And Arthur knew exactly what truth to say to Layla, so she thinks that Mark has secrets that she would want to know. And it, it like, it really does seem like, maybe you know, th th it's possible that it wasn't Mark; it was a different alter. But it does appear that it was his body used to kill her father. So, yeah. And you know, that is like, when we were told, you know, oh, he intentionally he was like trying to divorce her. Oh, you know, he's trying to keep her away from, you know, danger. Maybe he's, oh, you know, maybe he's scared that she's going to realize that he killed her father. You know, that's also a possibility. And again, we see Mark reluctant to let Stephen have the body, worried he won't get it back. They figure out the navigation, and they turn back the night sky. Very cool. And the gods take away... Conchu's power. And it, it is like, dude, what did we just say? Like, literally, like, has, has it been more than, like, several hours? I don't think it's been an entire day since they were like, you gotta stop this right now. Like, okay, we, we told you, we've, we've, tr you know, we've tried being reasonable with you. We have an agreement, you know, you know the rules. This has been settled. This is a settled matter that you just have to respect. And then he, you know, moves, like, apparently moves the sky back by, what was it, 2,000 years? Yeah, just, wow. And Arthur talks about how it's Khonshu that made him the way he is. And I quite like, you know, can can he hear me? Oh, we think so. Oh, great. I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to villain monologue at him. And yeah, really exciting that he lost his powers. I'm not sure how he'll get them back. I figure he will before the show's over, and for sure he's getting them back at some point. There's no way that they introduce something that cool and, you know, yeah, and, and then not really, you know, we want to see Moon Knight in a fight. You know, we, we want to see him on, what was it called? The Midnight Suns, I want to say, the team is called. We want to see him fighting something more like yeah finding something completely different it's super cool to see him fight these egyptian or supernatural enemies but it would be super like if he's going to team up with blade and they're going to go hunting for something supernatural uh, yeah very cool action in this episode and a lot of it too some people think that it's a huge deal the country changed the sky and some people don't i i mean i don't want to get too excited because loki looked like like it was holy crap, you know, all these bombs that, you know, Sylvie set up, and then it gets solved off screen. Although I think that might have been a COVID thing, like they had something planned, but it was going to take way too many people in too small of an area. 
you know, that, that kind of thing. So they had to hand wave it away off screen. I really appreciate that Arthur works smart, not hard. Sure, he could keep sending jackals and Moon Knight, but he wiped the floor with the last two, so instead he tries to use the other gods against him. In episode two, we learned that not only do none of the other gods respect Kanchu, but Arthur knows this, though I will acknowledge in this episode that was more of a self-defense than an attack, but that's because he already got the scare of. He's got the men digging. He doesn't need to do anything directly for that, and... After that, he does actively pursue them to show up at Anton's, trying to split Layla and Mark, both because Layla is important to Mark's success, and uh, who's, who's clearly having trouble at Anton's without her. Or it, Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he would have been able to get... I'm, I'm almost certain he wouldn't have gotten by at Anton's without her. I saw someone, maybe IGN, say, you know, it's kind of weird, like he's supposed to be this spy undercover, and, and he has such trouble... With Anton's, yeah, I, I don't know what that's about, honestly. I, yeah, I agree. And, you know, it, it would also cause Mark heartache, which would make him a less efficient opponent. I've seen some wonder why Steven is trying to work against Mark, trying to prevent him from what he's doing. The way I see it, Steven doesn't trust Mark at all. He thinks of him as a killer that can't be trusted, so of course he's going to try to stop him. That's the ethical thing to do. And... You know, the, the, let's see, you know, I, S Stephen realizes that it's necessary to stop Arthur and Ahmed, but to Stephen, Mark is a killer and, and one who torments him, insults him, uses his body, leaves him with the mess. Keep in mind the executions the cops told Stephen about. And, and, you know, Stephen tried to, like, confront him and what, what did Mark say? Something like, you don't, you don't know the whole thing. You know, he wasn't like... That was not me, you know. You know, he, he was... Yeah, he didn't seem to think that it wasn't something he had done. Some Easter egg YouTubers theorized that the bit where both Steve and Mark say that they're not responsible for the killing spree means that there is a third altar, which does make a lot of sense. Some even say the third altar would be, will be the secret hidden villain of the show, which would be super cool. Yeah. As usual, I, you know, I continue to love these episodes. Really excited to see what happens next. I have to admit, when the episode started with the uh, Arthur at Ahmed's tomb, I had expected that by the end of the episode we would see him reach Ahmed, but, you know, the digging, that does make a lot of sense. It's not going to be just like, oh, it's right behind this door. You know, the, the, the other gods don't want Ahmed to be found, so, yeah, they tried to make it difficult to get there. I, I, you know, I guess it's possible that Lara Croft will have to show up with one part of the triangle. I guess we'll see. Anyway, yeah, super excited for next episode, and I'll catch you then.